How do you get in shape to walk across the country? And not really just walk, but actually hike with anywhere from 10 to 30 pounds on your back. I'm talking about backpacking 25 plus miles a day, every day for five plus months to get from Mexico to Canada by foot. In other words, how do you train for a through hike? It's one of the questions that I get fairly often from aspiring backpackers and through hikers. And I just got done testing out my very unofficial training plan for the Fifner Traverse. So I thought it would be a good opportunity to share what I do to train for backpacking trips or through hikes. I'll also link some resources in the description of this video from people who are a lot more qualified to speak on this than me, like physical therapists, personal trainers, etc. I just wanted to share my experience as a through hiker, as someone who has walked 5,000 miles across the country twice. If you happen to just stumble across this video and you're kind of wondering, wait, why would I even need to train for a through hike or a backpacking trip at all? Can I just start and use the first couple weeks of my trip to get in shape? Well, yes, you can, and that's a strategy that some people use, but personally, I think you're gonna have a way better time, especially if it's a shorter trip, if you put in some work beforehand to get in shape and you're also gonna be less likely to sustain injuries that could eventually take you off trail. So if you actually want to enjoy your backpacking trip or the beginning of your through hike and hopefully prevent some injuries, stick around for my favorite ways to get in shape before long backpacking trips. And if you stick around to the end, I actually have some tips for things you can do on trail as well. First and foremost, I think one of the best ways to prepare for long days on your feet with weight on your back is by putting in long days on your feet with weight on your back. Unfortunately, there isn't much that can truly prepare you for backpacking other than lots of backpacking. Now, I know many of us don't have that kind of extra free time before through hikes especially, but there are a few ways that I like to get those miles in even while working a nine to five before I take off on my adventure. First of all, going on walks and hikes with a weighted vest is a great way to get in miles and also prepare your body for the weight of a pack. I recommend starting with lower weight and working your way up to what your pack will likely weigh. This way you can build strength without burning out or getting injured. And by the time you get on trail, you'll be so used to the weight on your back that it won't be such a struggle. If you're trying to kind of gauge what your pack weight might be, think of it as your base weight, so all of your gear, plus a few days of food and two liters of water. I think that's a very safe estimate. I usually add about 10 pounds on top of my base weight as a goal training weight. So for example, if my base weight is 10 pounds, I'll train with 20 because when I have about two liters of water and say three to four days of food, that's probably on average what I'll be carrying. If you're anything like me, you might be thinking, why do I need a weighted vest? Why not just throw a couple dumbbells in my backpack? And from personal experience, I don't think this is a great idea. The weight distribution is just way off when you just put weight in a backpack and it could result in injury. It actually ended up really messing up my back. If you don't want to buy a weighted vest, I recommend packing your backpack the way you would for your trip and then putting in liters of water to add a little extra weight if you don't want to pack food or whatever. You can also change the amount of water you put in there to build up weight over time. A liter of water is like 2.1 pounds for reference. That way the weight will be distributed appropriately and you won't risk injury. And it might be good practice packing up your backpack. Since I tend to go on walks during the week anyway, I always just try to bring my weighted vest along when I'm training for a backpacking trip. Second big tip is that strength training is super important. I'm admittedly not a big gym goer, but I've heard experts talk for years about how weightlifting and strength training is the best way for endurance athletes to avoid injury. And I've finally incorporated going to the gym to my training routine. And I'm excited to see how it helps my performance on longer backpacking trips. If you're like me and you don't really know much about lifting weights, I recommend either getting a personal trainer or finding and following a workout routine that's designed for endurance athletes. Um, this will help you target the muscles that you need for backpacking and prevent injury over the course of your through hike. Third, I feel like this one might be a bit obvious, but worth noting. I think cardio is a great way to get more miles in on days when you have less time. Because I don't really have time to go on long hikes every single day of the week, I also incorporate cardio workouts and running into my training plan. This helps me increase my cardio levels without having to spend hours and hours hiking. My fourth big tip is something a little bit different and something I sort of consider my personal secret weapon when it comes to through hiking, and that is hot yoga, specifically heated vinyasa. 
I love hot yoga as a through hiking training method for a few reasons. First of all, you get a good dose of both cardio and strength training in classes. Particularly, it involves a lot of core strengthening, which is vital for endurance athletes and especially helpful for carrying a heavy backpack for miles and miles and miles. Another huge reason that I think hot yoga is a really helpful training tool is it helps so much with heat tolerance. Um, depending on the trail you're hiking, you very well may have to exert a lot of energy during very hot stretches of trail, and hot yoga prepares your body very well for that. The fifth thing I want to really highlight is getting in vertical feet. One thing that makes backpacking a lot harder than just walking is the vertical change that you experience on most trails that are worth backpacking. Most views require a climb to get there, and one thing that has helped me tremendously in preparing for the high route I just did was basically climbing everything I could find within a 15 minute drive of my house. Even if you aren't doing a high route, getting that vert in before your trip is going to make the vert on that trip feel a lot better. I always tend to repeat to myself when I'm doing training climbs, suffer more now and suffer less later. If you live somewhere flat, maybe you're in the middle of a bunch of cornfields and you're like, Elise, I don't have hills for miles where I live, find a stadium, find a tall building, go up and down those stairs and your quads will thank you for it later. So in summary, before I leave for a through hike, when I'm training, I like to incorporate weighted vest walking and hiking, strength training, cardio, hot yoga, and lots of vert. Finally, that brings me to a few things that you can do once you're actually on the trail in order to make your through hike successful from a training perspective and from a preventing injury perspective. First of all, and this can be really hard to do if you do have some training on, under your belt, but it's really important on longer through hikes that you start slow. For some people, this is really intuitive, but for me, it's always kind of a struggle, especially if I've trained well. I feel like I can keep going, I feel like I can keep pushing, but I've found that I always get injured like two weeks in when I do that. It's really hard to slow down when you're excited, you hit the trail, you're feeling great, but if you're doing really high mileage right off the bat, really consistently, it might result in some stress injuries. So if you can, try to slow your roll in the first couple weeks of your hike and ramp your mileage up slowly as your body adjusts to backpacking bigger and bigger miles. Second, and I'm partially saying this because I still need to hear it a lot of the time, is stretching on trail. It can be exhausting when you get to camp and the only thing you want to do is cook dinner and go to bed, but stretching even a little bit every night at camp will help prevent lots of injuries on your through hike and make it more enjoyable overall. I've also carried one of those little roller balls to help me roll out my muscles and find that to be super helpful as well. I hope you found this video helpful and that it inspires you to start preparing for your next through hike or long backpacking trip. If you have any additional questions, or tips or resources that you'd like to share, please do so in the comments. Happy training and happy hiking.